Without a doubt, still one of the greatest mysteries within the universe, black holes are very compelling. And here, in the Space Engine, as we approach the event horizon, it's not hard to see why. Now this particular black hole is one of the smaller ones, and we get to one of the truly massive ones very shortly. But before that, let's have a look at something a little familiar. This is the Nebula and Bernard's Loop. Many of you will be familiar with it, but as we move around from the other side, we get to see it from a somewhat unusual perspective. And there in the distance is the centre of the galaxy, the galactic core, and the Sagittarius A, a supermassive black hole. Now, what I want to show you today in Space Engine is the sheer size of everything. Now, what we're looking at here, the diameter is believed to be roughly the same size as the Earth's orbit around our Sun. So, very, very big indeed, but by no means the largest thing within Space Engine. Now, fortunately for us, the viewing modes allow us to see things from a somewhat unusual perspective. We've got a HDR mode here, and I'll talk about that a little bit further into the video. But essentially, that allows us to see the bright core of the a black hole and its surrounding accretion disk, in addition to allowing us to see the surrounding stars and the rest of the galaxy as well. And if I use the V key, we can switch that off and go over to a photo mode. So yes, things look dramatically different here. Now, one of the other things I want to show you today is how to use Space Engine. So whilst this isn't going to be a full-on tutorial, it will give you some insight as to how I use the uh, Space Engine software to produce these types of videos. And that should help you in turn to explore the galaxy and all the wonderful things out there. And we get to all that in just a bit. But talking of the galaxy itself and all the other things out there, let's accelerate outside the galaxy. Every single white dot you can see here is another entire galaxy. We've literally zipped out of the Milky Way as fast as we possibly can, many thousands of times the speed of light per second. There are literally thousands upon thousands of other galaxies out there, and this is one of them. Unimaginable distances away from our own galaxy, we in turn can zoom in here and look at the stars that are within this galaxy and even land on the planets here. So it's believed that the Milky Way has 100 billion stars within it. Well, Space Engine isn't content with limiting itself to that. Instead, it has 100 billion different galaxies, each of which, of course, has billions of stars within them. And it's very easy to navigate around this. I'm using a HOTA setup here, so that's a joystick and a throttle, and I've also got some rudder pedals as well. And I've used key bindings so I can essentially fly the camera around as though it's a ship. But there is also a full-on spaceship option. It's not something I've tried to just yet, but it's something I'll show in a future video. Meanwhile, low, you can find a link to my key bindings below. So we've had a bit of a tour around now, and you've got a feel for the sheer size of Space Engine. Let's have a look at how it works. Okay, so I've said in previous videos that we could have a look at how Space Engine actually works, rather than me just showing off various systems and stars and other sorts of effects. So in this video, I want to have a look at a little bit at how I tend to use Space Engine, at least in terms of producing some of the videos here. So here we are, next to a very impressive star, and this one has got a little bit of a ring system around it. There's a whole bunch of asteroids here. Now you may have noticed that all we're seeing is all the graphics of Space Engine and no user interface, but Space Engine does actually have a very involved user interface. And I normally disable that for the videos so we can actually enjoy the graphics themselves. So I've set a keybind here. That's a default one, but I've set my own keybind, and keybind is something we'll go into further into the video. But I press that and put the UI back on. You can see it's interface brief, interface full, or interface none. We want it on full. So over here, we've got a planet I was just on, just before I started recording, selected, which was a, a Torrid Eris Airless Mini Terra, so a small world orbiting very close to this star. We can actually select any of these, and it will tell us about what we've got selected. So that's a Torrid Asteroid. This is a blue supergiant, which is 754 astronomical units away, so that's a long way away. That's three astronomical units away. Some of these are closer than others. And that one is pretty close, a torrid asteroid. So once you've got something selected and you want to go to it, you can press the G key and your camera will slowly move towards it. Or you can press G again and you'll get an accelerated view towards it. So naturally, this is very, very bright because we're right near the uh, star. And there's a number of ways we can actually look at it. At the moment, I've got HDR options selected, which enables us to see both dark areas and bright areas simultaneously. So very similar to a HDR function if you use it on a camera or on a TV. But you can change this 
and disable HDR by using the V key, in which case you go into photo mode, which is currently set to auto. And basically here what will happen is that the visuals will change depending on the situation, so it's very much context sensitive. And of course gives us a very different view, and we come back to that in a minute, I want to show you a bit more on that. We've got a manual mode for that as well, and back to HDR, so let's get right, right around the side of the asteroid that's very bright. And the reason I'm coming around here is so that we can take a look at the exposure controls. And for this you can use the angle brackets, you can dis uh, decrease exposure or increase exposure. And this is very handy for situations where you're next to something very very bright like this star. In fact, you can decrease exposure so much that you can see the internal structure of the star. Likewise, increasing the exposure, and we'll have a look at that further into the video with a better example, but increasing the exposure allows you to see some dimly lit areas, or sometimes allows you to better see background colours such as nebula or the galactic backdrop. And simply pressing the forward slash key returns the exposure back to the return value, or the default value rather, of 1. So, like I said, Space Engine does have a full-on uh, interface, and that these side panels and bottom panels are actually hidden, or I've hidden them for filmmaking I've hidden purposes. Them for fi you can enable them again, just move the cursor over to the corners of the screen, and click on the little pins. Move the cursor. Now, there's a lot of information here, so I won't go through right here the day. It's certainly not in detail, but this panel, yeah. detail, but this right panel bottom left-hand panel is for camera oh. control, and the one over on the right, which and you may want to use, allows you to enable or disable certain features. So, for example, like I just did there, you can you disable, disable all stars, or you might want to disable planets, or, or enable see. orbit lines, like I have there. So, basically, this allows you to customise your experience by enabling or disabling certain features. Very, very useful, depending on what you're trying to achieve. For example, then, Galaxies was turned off there, and I've turned it back on again. And that will display or disable the, the uh, galaxy you're currently in, as well as all the background ones. And yep, there goes the star. So exploring the galaxy or the universe at random is rather good, but what if you want to look for something specific? Well, simply press F3. And what this allows you to do is search for any known object within the night sky, so we can look for very close by objects, Venus for example, or even Earth itself if we were so inclined. And you can use this feature to find absolutely anything you want, including all known nebula. But now assume you want to find something unknown. So maybe you want to find an Earth-like world or a binary star system. Press Shift and F3 and then go to the filter settings. And here you can search for anything you'd like. I'm going to look for an Earth-like type world. So we need to put in Torrid and uh, Oceanic. And then we need to go for Terra as well in the third box. Now this might be a bit too specific, so maybe it won't find anything, but you can, even still you can go as specific as you like, putting in things such as temperature, atmosphere, the number of moons it's got, and just about anything else. Then simply click OK, and up in the top left of this particular menu, you enter the number of light years you want these search parameters to look for. So you can put in a thousand light years or ten thousand light years, and then click on search. The software will then think about it for a while, and then eventually start searching and then populating. Now in this case, I was a bit too specific, there's not many Earth-likes out there like it, so it did come back with absolutely no results. But that's very easy to fix. Simply go back into the filter settings here, and refine it a little bit. In this case, we're going to put in an Earth-type star, or a solar system-type star, which is main sequence GN2. And I'm also going to remove the Oceanic and change that to NE. Again, you can be as specific as you like, or as wide-ranging as you like. Sometimes it takes quite a while after you click OK, but eventually it will go. Just wait for it, and then the field will begin to populate. So now we've got a whole ton of different star systems here, and we can go down the list and click each one of them in turn. You get a little summary up on the top left there. But if you want more details, then simply select a star system, and then press the F2 key. And here you'll simply get a summary of what's in that particular star system. Here it looks like there's two binary welds, one of them ringed, and that's a pretty nice feature. I do want to go and have a look at that. So you can go straight there, just press the G key. And if you find you're moving a little too slowly, then just press G again, and you'll move at a greater speed. I'm going to move the interface out of the way there. If you do close the menu down, it does remember the uh, previous search, out of the way. so it's not lost if you close it, you don't have to worry about that. But I do want to leave it open for just a moment. And here we are, straight away at a ringed weld. 
And yes, if we wanted to, we can go and have a look down at that by landing on it. Too. And yeah, it's a binary star system as well. It looks very nice when reflecting through the rings. So using the search field like this within Space Engine allows you to find just about everything. You are limited, of course, to the search distances, so it sometimes still takes you quite a while to actually find anything that you may be looking for. That if you... something's very specific. Earth-like worlds, for example, as I said, can be quite hard to come by. But on the thing, there's plenty of gorgeous atmospheric worlds out there, and some of these look very gorgeous indeed. It's there. very good when you get down to the planetary surface. You get down there. to the planet yeah, near orbit. You can see the good even here near parameters. orbit, as well as the aurora effects. Again, don't be shy of experimenting with the exposure and or the HDR, and you'll be able to see how how differently that does affect things. But for now, let's go down to this planetary surface, fly through the atmosphere and see what things look like down there. And what you will notice is that as we get down into the atmosphere, especially the lower, thicker parts of it, it will start making the local star look very, very different. In fact, there's enough atmosphere here that the local star looks to seem quite familiar, not too dissimilar to what we see on Earth. Now, one feature in Space Engine I always like playing with is the time mode. You can press L to speed time up, so allowing you to get straight ahead and see sunsets, K to slow time down, and you can even reverse time using J. Now, not only are the time features good for when you're down on planets for looking at sunsets and other uh, sky phenomena, but also very good when you're up in space and looking at the orbital mechanics of any particular system. So, for example, we've got a gas giant system here, and we could use the time acceleration keys to move the moons around so we can see them in a much better position, perhaps something more suited to filming or something to get us a much better screenshot. I'm going to have a look at a better example of this slightly into the video with a oceanic world, something a little bit more like Earth. Earlier on, I mentioned using the exposure controls to try and experiment a bit and try and get some nice visuals. And we're going to try that right here by experimenting with different exposures, two, three, and even four. And of course, you can go as high as you like. And just look at the impact that actually has. Some very, very nice colors here. And all the while, this has no impact upon the darkness of the planet itself, which stays very, very dark. So we get some exceptional contrast. So certainly don't be frightened of experimenting with exposure and the different color settings. You can get some surprising results. And here we are in a totally different system. And I've found an oceanic planet, a water world. And what's very nice about this one is that it has three very close by moons. I've accelerated up time here and we're slowly moving away from the moon and this gives us an effect of a time lapse whilst we've still got camera motion as well. You can see the moons very slowly orbiting the world in the background. And meanwhile, experimenting with the exposure effects will allow you to see the background nebula to lesser or greater extents. So I've used the time acceleration keys to get the moons positioned where I've wanted them to and now I'm going to use another feature which is the zoom in mode for the camera. And the amount of magnification on this is truly phenomenal. You can just keep zooming and zooming. And what this allows you to do is get a close up of a planetary surface or a moon surface like this one, but it also allows you to get a fantastic backdrop. Now here's another thing. Once you've got the camera positioned where you want, keep it relatively still and you'll see that the ground keeps drawing in, becoming ever increasing detailed. Now the highest setting you can set land to in the graphics menu is one, but if you go into the console, you can use a set land LOD two and that will set it even higher, and you can see that slowly drawing in here in increasing detail. But do keep in mind this is a massive performance hog and you'll need to reset it back to one before too much longer. So that covers some of the basics. I hope it's been a bit of a help to you. We can go into increasing detail in future videos though. Do let me know of any subjects you'd love me to cover and I can make sure to do that in another video. As for keybinds, I'll also go through that in more detail in another video if everyone's interested enough but for now, I'll include my keybind profile in the video description. Do check it out. So I think that brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.